Within the games, unitologists have always been the main villains of the series, the ones who believed that aliens had created the human race, which some go so far as to say that the markers helped to shape the human race into existence. The religion, like many, have casual, moderate, and extremist believers. The extremists are normally the ones to help the markers to spread, start an outbreaks of necromorphs, paving the way to their holy convergence. The religion would start out peacefully at first, then moving into a more radical approach to their beliefs, then going into the direction of a extremist movement, working within the shadows, all the way to toppling EarthGov as a military organization. In this video we will be looking through the history of the religion to see where they had strayed from the path of divinity and onto the tracks of destruction and mayhem that would lead humanity to imminent extinction. In 2214, Craig Markov was an influential member of the military within the Sovereign Colonies and a key component in the extraction of the Black Marker. During the events of Dead Space Martyr, Michael Altman would broadcast a video of the Black Marker to a press conference in Washington DC in which he called out the government for the suppression of public awareness about the discovery. Michael and his girlfriend would later be interrogated and tortured by Kratz, one of Markov's inner circle for revenge. While this was happening, the seed of Unitology had grown into a religious fever throughout the station the marker had been transported to. This in turn clashed with the security forces to the point of the early Unitologists breaking out in riot against them, in which several people were killed. This event had led into humanity's first encounter with a necromorph outbreak, which thanks to Michael had ended with him flooding the station, effectively sinking the station, sending the marker back down to the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. As Michael and a survivor fled in a motorboat, Harmon hit Michael, knocking him out cold, once she had found out that he was not a believer. She would bring Michael back to Markov, Stevens and Crax. With him being restrained in a chair, they revealed to him that their religious belief in the Marker's life-creating nature and the conclusion that it is divine. Markov assured Altman that he had aided in their understanding of it. They had intended to replicate the marker and share it with the public, only they would reveal little bits of information in order to keep attention and devotion to the cause whilst they worked on doing so. They would kill Altman and spread the word of his devotion to the marker through religious texts and lore. Altman would become the leader of the movement he worked so hard to defeat. Markov and Stevens toasted champagne in an overhead chamber as they watched Altman killed by the monstrosity they had turned Crax into, a brute-like necromorph, which they would soon create a cover story to sweep the events under the rug. With Altman's death sparking the birth of Unitology as a minor religion, among others, using Michael as a martyr, they would recruit more and more into the fold, growing in numbers, soon to become the number one religion within humanity, leaving the rest to the dust. In 2215, Unitology had become the single largest religion within human space, spreading their message of unification and convergence to the entirety of humanity. Like any religion, there were believers and extremists. Unitologists would worship both the Marker and Michael Altman as the Marker's prophet, who was tragically taken from them. The church had provided a positive and very appealing message towards the public for social harmony and unity. They had also environmental concerns to do with planet cracking and the apparent destructive course that the CEC had taken. Unitology started to grow in numbers due to their great appeal because spirituality and meaning had become become absent in many people's lives. Unitology provided a simple and holistic message of unity, harmony and fulfillment that was just what certain people in the world of the ever-expanding technological infrastructure were looking for. Unitologists haven't been very clear on what they perceive to be their god, however many would use the word quite frequently like Dr. Chalice Mercer, the doctor from the Aegis 7 incident, who successfully created the hunter necromorph that would stalk Isaac until meeting its eventual demise at the hand of fate. 
God to many unitologists is seen to be some sort of alien intelligence that influenced mankind's creation and evolution, with some even believing that when they die, their souls go back to their creators. Death is central to unitology. They believed that all living beings would interwine and become one like the two sides of the market joining together and meeting at the base. They called this convergence in which was believed to elevate all of the destructive materialistic problems of the human race. People would lose their individuality and become one entity. Unitologists in their spare time would preach to people that weren't within their religion in an attempt to convert the masses. However, many did see that the religion looked to be a cult, not a rational religion, or at least not anymore, with some of the public stating that they are insane, especially when they preach about the alien designer of humanity. Unitologists would also wear marker pendants that they would buy from the church, as a social statement that they are proud of their beliefs. Financial gain would not benefit the individual at these shops, but rather the church as a whole. This would also act as a win-win scenario for them. They gain some credits to further their churches, and they spread their gospel truth by doing so. Common practices are as follows. Soul cleansing. Not much is known about this practice other than it is the first event that newcomers will attend to, like an initiation ceremony, which has been described to be painful and disorientating. Indoctrination. Many people believe that unitologists are indoctrinated or brainwashed into their order, which may hold some truth as many of them have gone to great lengths to show support of their beliefs. If someone were to question their beliefs, there would be no deterring from their course within their mind, and has even sparked fights in the past, along with those non-believers to be labelled as heretics or infidels like Isaac Clarke. Prayer. Unitologists appear to engage in communal praying led by the church's clergy or priest. Meditation. Unitologists were known to meditate with their arms crossed and their hands bent backwards in an attempt to emulate the pose of the marker. The meditation is referred to as quiet, reverent, as they focused on the teachings of the church. Death rituals. This is the most important part of the practices for unitologists. They are encouraged to accept and celebrate deaths of loved ones, and they hope to one day join them, rather than to mourn them. Unitologists will also refuse to allow their loved ones or themselves to be cremated or buried, instead choosing to preserve the bodies in their ships, space stations, or even in the morgue of the several churches. The reason for this is the belief that a human body must be untouched after death, as it is the vessel for the member's convergence. Convergence is the belief that upon death, if the human body has been kept intact and the unitologist has lived an unselfish life, that all the bodies will one day be reborn with ascended spiritual and physical prowess and will live in unity with his or her other members as a single community. It is heavily encouraged by members that they keep their bodies in the best shape possible upon death. Despite its rather peaceful public image, the Church of Unitology is noted to have many cult-like qualities including its indoctrination practices and its hierarchy, along with its major capability to command its followers into mass suicide, especially when a marker is present within the station, planet or colony bases. Due to the overall size of the religion, it has managed to grasp a lot of power, and with such power comes influence in politics and economics, even having followers within the CEC itself. It has been mentioned for Unitologists to be able to move freely up the ranks, that they would have to donate large sums of credits to the church. The ranks above the average follower are as follows. The Vested, Overseers, like the ones from Dead Space Aftermath who covered the Aegis 7 incident up prior to Dead Space 2, Enigmas and Paragons. It is speculated that the ranks are as follows in the ranking system of the church as at the bottom are your newly acquired followers, just above them are your church's loyalists. Then there are the vested, which are most likely priests or teachers of the order. Above them are the paragons, which are most likely to be the high tier scholars within the unitology studies. And at the top are the enigmas, possibly called that for having their imagery blackened out and their previous aliases or identities wiped for security measures as they may be the ones pulling the strings of the organization. 
However, this is all just speculation and has not been confirmed yet. As many organizations, the church has a lot of skeletons in their closets. Most notable is the foundation of the religion, which was formed on that Michael Altman was the one true prophet of Unitology who could speak with Marker, and that he was the one who founded the order, despite Michael having only one thought in his mind about the order, and that's a major dislike of the overall religion before his untimely death. The real founders believed that the Necromorphs were defects of the Marker's capabilities, but also thought that they were divine spirits as well, just had defected vessels, not worthy of ascending as one. However, they believed and focused more on the reanimation process, believing that it was evident to the Marker creating life, and could bring about eternal life if it could be controlled and the power used correctly. These thoughts have been the forefront for Unitology, however that message has been bended and twisted throughout time, like Chinese whispers. Like how the reanimation process does with DNA bending and twisting it to assume its new role. Some followers believe that Unitology was founded to prepare humanity for the coming of a new marker. The church however believed that the marker was some sort of key to the next step of human evolution and that they were entrusted to ensure that it would come to pass. They believed that the psychosis caused by the marker was relevatory and that the horrors of the marker are merely the result of humans being too weak-minded and materialistic to understand the workings of God. The founders had kept live necromorphs locked away for study and not to be released, as they wanted the secret to eternal life and not to spread infection. They wanted to understand them what made them tick along with their destructive capabilities. It would be 96 years before the sovereign colonies would begin testing on red copies of the black marker with their researchers experimenting on them, creating recombinant life forms which would eventually kill doctors and researchers, transforming them into necromorphs, sparking the downfall of the sovereign colonies and the rising victory of the Earth Rebellion within the succession wars. The sovereign colonies would find Tal Volantis, along with the truth within the church, that the final stage of Amarca's uprising would end with it pulling all of the necrotized flesh into the sky, taking whatever it clinged to along with it to form a blood moon, so Unitology would be correct in their beliefs, unfortunately for the wrong reasons. The original designs of Unitology would fall apart soon after this, and would be replaced with ones that conveyed the message that necromorphs were evidence to the promise of rebirth and unity rather than eternal life. Their roles within the games are rather antagonistic towards Isaac and the player, however in many media outlets it has been noted that there are some rather pleasant Unitologists like Samuel Irons and Dr. Kine. Within the Aegis 7 era, the Unitologists would be a mix between having a rational mindset to being in an irrational delusional state, like the contrast between Dr. Mercer and Dr. Kine. While Dr. Kine is plagued by hallucinations of his deceased wife, he still has a rational mindset, first looking for a way to make sure that the Necromorph outbreak doesn't progress any further than the Ishimura by scuttling the ship, creating a makeshift quarantine, if you will. He would then work up a plan to return the marker back to the planet to end the outbreak. While Dr. Mercer isn't plagued by any known hallucinations, but does turn into a psychopath, experimenting on one of the colonists, transforming him into the hunter necromorph as we all love and hate, while also locking Isaac in rooms filled with necromorphs in hopes that he will fall to the infection. Prior to the fall of Titan Station, Unitology would get even worse, straying from the path of enlightenment into extremism. This can be seen when the church sends Carrie Norton into the government sector to sabotage the communications relay and the door controls, allowing the necromorphs in from the Titan mines. They would betray her, leaving Carrie or Vandal for dead, only to further manipulate her into allowing the necromorphs to overrun the crossover tubes, which would lead to the eventual demise of the public sector. After the events of Dead Space 2, tensions would soon arise between EarthGov and the Church of Unitology. Unitologists have often come into conflict with EarthGov over planet cracking, the suppression of information on the marker, and most believed the government killed Michael Altman. The Church is a strong force which is evidenced in both Dead Space and Dead Space 2 lore, however they will never be satisfied, much like the Necromorphs, they won't rest until all humanity sees their light. The conflict was mostly an information 
information war with some physical struggles. However, it wasn't until Jacob Danik intervened within the Order to reanimate its purpose from being a cult-like religion using manipulative tactics to further their own ends, to becoming an insurrection to overthrow the government and to release the markers from their testing labs. He would soon create his own sub-faction, possibly out of the remnants of the Oracle group, called The Circle. Once Danik had fully rose to power, he would go to various planets creating necromorph outbreaks, killing those who would most likely hold the marker, stalling convergence prior to the outbreak, then releasing chaos and judgement upon the heretics they deemed deserving of such a plight. He would soon attack a planet called Yuxor to destroy the marker site there in the events of Dead Space Liberation. His operatives would act as shadows going unseen from the likes of John Carver. Danik would guide a missile from a cruiser to the exact marker site, releasing the terror once again. That is, if John wasn't there to stall it. In the distraction of the outbreak, Danik was looking for research from the long since forgotten sovereign colonies on the marker that was discovered by John's wife, Damara Carver. They would soon meet Carver who stumbled upon them by accident, and so they would capture and interrogate him for the whereabouts of his wife. Danik was set on killing John once he had learned he was married to who he was looking for. The reason that they needed Damara Carver was because she was the one who discovered the research on the marker from the sovereign colonies. John would escape, unfortunately he would be too late to save his family since Danek had gotten there first, killing Dylan, John's son, then Damara. After this, Danek would overhear a transmission between John and Ellie and he would set a trap for them only for it to be sprung and failing to eliminate their enemies. However, Danik and his forces would soon follow their trail to Geehole Station as he ordered an attack on the Eudora. Robert Norton would destroy the shock ring as soon as Ellie had made it through, ensuring that Danik would not be able to find her at Tau Volantis. After losing track of the Eudora and seeing the shock ring destroyed, he would issue all forces to return to base, where he would begin looking for clues of the marker killer's whereabouts. Earthgirv at this time would start to crumble in the conflict against the Circle. However, the insurrection force that Diana created wasn't all of Unitology. There were groups of Unitologists that would stay out of the conflict, sticking to their practices and studies within the Order, and possibly finding other ways of tipping the conflict in their favour, like writing graffiti over Tideman's posters. Danik would also create propaganda against Earthgirv and ushering the new age for mankind, which he would broadcast to colonies across known human territories. Brothers and sisters, the age of man is at an end. We have become too many, too little to go around. Corporations that we once trusted with our money have squandered it. The governments that we once trusted with our future have sabotaged it. For their eternal credit, we are dying. Fear not. There is a future. As promised by the prophet Michael Walton, the Black Marker has a plan for all of you. It will lift us up from our miserable existence, and we will become one. United in body and united in spirit, our unity will be our salvation. We will live on, not as men, but as God. The Church of Unitology is waiting for you, my friends. Throw off the chains of this life and join us as the new one begins. I'm Jacob Arthur Danik, and I am this message. Danik would then come across the Lunar Colony to kill the last few pockets of resistance of EarthGov, where he would come across Isaac Clarke, where he would demonstrate the great and terrible power at his disposal. He would make a few life attempts on Isaac, but would fail. However, Danik is a persistent one and would track them to Tau Volantis, where all contact would be lost with the Church. And that's my overhaul for the Unitologists in the Dead Space universe, up to the Dead Space 3 title. 
I hope you all found this very insightful. Reasons as to why I'm not making the third timeline video straight away is because there are a few subjects that I need explaining before we can move on into the Tal Volantis timeline. Next law video will be about the succession wars and the downfall of the sovereign colonies. And then we will be talking about a more in-depth look at liberation in another video to give some characters more backstory. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then hit the like button. Comment something for me to read later on and I look forward to hearing from you. And if you're new here, then sign up to join the British Alliance today by subscribing and ringing in the notification bell and I will see all of you on the front lines and have a good one. <laughs>